Why, hello there, Comic Clan. Errol the Comic Chief here, and today I will be going over the Avengers issue number 702. Why? Whosoever watches this channel, if he or she be worthy, shall acquire the knowledge from the Comic Chief. Wow. This is the 12th issue in Jason Aaron's series. I ended up going with the Phil Notto variant because, well, it's Phil Notto and all his 80th anniversary covers are actually pretty good. Look at those 60s styles of characters. Hulk, Fantastic Four, Ant-Man, Daredevil, The Wasp, The X-Men, Spidey, Black Panther, The Inhumans. Strong work. That can be said about this entire issue and maybe the, the whole series. And yeah, by the cover art, the original cover art, I thought it was awesome too. And it was done by Alan Davis, Mark Farmer, and Jim Campbell. I wish I got that one, but I can't be double dipping nowadays. Anyway, the interior art was done by Mark Morales, Carl Cassell, and Scott Hanna. And I like their take on our Avengers more. This is a huge step up from the last couple of issues in my eyes. The dialogue is so good also, and the character interaction from T'Challa and everyone else you are about to see is spot on and so important. The plot, I wish they released this issue before the last one, it would have flowed a little bit better in my eyes, but hey, there there must be some grand scheme of things here. At $3.99, I would like to point out that I would have paid $4.99. Every single page was exciting and awesome to look out. Uh, straight up perfect 5 out of 5. This issue is titled The Agents of Wakanda. Ed McGinnis is still co-writing and Corey Smith as well. Jason Aaron, you have an excellent team here. Issue 12 takes place weeks ago in Avengers Mountain. I'm guessing this takes place right after Black Panther was nominated chairperson of the Avengers. We get a nice surprise cameo from Edwin Jarvis, the longtime butler of Tony Stark and the Avengers, and it points out he is semi-retired. He's invited to come back, but he respectfully declines. Black Panther probably already knew that and just wanted to offer him the courtesy of helping him with some advice on who he can take onto the staff to help the Avengers function at top peak. The first person on the list happens to be Gorilla Man in Timbuktu. I was wondering how and why he came out of nowhere in the 700th issue. Black Panther walks into the bar, chit chats with Gorilla Man and who assumes he will become an Avenger, but this is where things get interesting. You'll find out later what T'Challa is doing, so I'll let the mystery brew a little bit. We then cut to T'Challa recruiting Janet Van Dyne, aka the Wasp, as they are together in Wakanda. Again, I thought T'Challa was going to ask her to join the Avengers to fill that empty seat, but it was for something else. And we will get to that soon. Next, T'Challa is at a planning table talking to Okoye, looking at T'Challa's list of candidates, and T'Challa wasn't building another team of Avengers, he made it clear they were already in place. He was trying to fill the void left behind from the fall of the shield. Of shield. He also told Okoye that she was the new director of the Agents of Wakanda. Her first direction was for Kazar. Yes, the one from the Savage Land, new agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., to infiltrate Atlantis and scope it out to gauge the needed preparations for what the Avengers might need to face in the near future. Back in Avengers Mountain, we find Gorilla Man, the new chief of security, uh, standing by at the transportation chamber, or teleportation chamber, which we find out is powered by the Circulator, which is a reanimated part of the Celestial Circulatory System. The writing is far out, but pretty damn cool because I do love me some sci-fi. This story is so great. That's not the only part of the progenitor that was repurposed, by the way. We cut to another room in Avengers Mountain and it was the former cranium of the progenitor where the former ex-student Brew is now the new head of the Avengers IT department. A lot of this seems over the top, but quite necessary. The way the art depicts T'Challa as a leader is also spot on. Meanwhile, the Wasp is carrying out a mission in space where she is re res rescuing or transporting touring an informant and you won't believe this morbius the living vampire what insanity is this besides now we're travel troubles we also learn that there is a vampire civil war straight to the point it involves morbius dracula power struggles and space vampires this is probably why we get that quick cameo of blade at the end of issue 700 think things are about to get crazy things heat up for morbius and the wasp so who better than john jameson to come in and rescue i mean he's an astronaut he's in space and he is man wolf Agent of Wakanda. I really am starting to want to pick up some Agents of Wakanda issues, but got a budget. In old Asgard, Black Panther conveniently teleports in to talk to his unofficial advisor Odin. When we first started this Avengers run, we started off with Odin summoning Black Panther and bringing him into the fold. Now this special trust, bond, and blossoming friendship is actually pretty great. For someone as old as Odin, for a god like Odin to trust Black Panther, pretty cool. So more on that, Vampire Civil War. Apparently things, this happens every century, but there's a mother of vampires that seems to be in Thorn and Odin's side. We also learn of a Shadow Colonel. 
He's stepping in to take over Transylvania and lay claim in an upcoming civil war. Okay, so Avengers Mountain has its Ages of Wakanda, and I'm digging it. The progenitor's hand has hanger bays at each of its fingertips with symbols for various Avengers. We are also introduced to more Ages of Wakanda. American Eagle, Dr. Nemesis, and Fat Cobra. He's already my favorite. Uh, there's uh, one more agent of Wakanda who I need to catch up in Thor number nine to read about. Agent Solomon, she's heading up the War of the Realms investigation, so you know she's going to be a key player. Meanwhile, Akoi is getting some directing done, and we have hints that she is working on recruiting Mockingbird, Shang-Chi, and Ant-Man. Valkyrie and Moon Knight already declined to join. This whole issue kept the Avengers out of the spotlight for good intentions and purposes. We see how well the Avengers operations are in good hands with Black Panther as their new leader. He seems to have a grip and a solid handle on how to ensure his team get the support they needed and it's uh, he's actually taking in lessons learned from previous mistakes from both the Avengers and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. The Avengers, the world, the universe, they're in good hands I would say so Black Panther is feeling yeah. A oh, good role. He's, so he fills in his team in regards to uh, Atlantis and Transylvania. When he starts telling them about the upcoming civil war and uh, plan to dethrone, dethrone uh, Dracula, uh, before he can introduce the newest member of the Avengers, um, Mr. Blades says what they're trying to say is I'm part of the team. Awesome. So at the time of this review, No Road Home number one just came out. Um, so I really do have to catch up and I got to catch up on Thor uh, because this War of the Realms is it's coming sooner than you think and I can't wait. So let me know, YouTube, what do you think uh, in the comment section below. Um, I love it. Hopefully you love it. And uh, let me know what you would like me to review next. So yeah, that's all I got. This is Errol, the Comic Chief, going offline.